in this so wrong. Restoring us. Yes. I know I have plenty, but I won't share mine. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right, gotta warm up. Gotta warm up. Come on. <laughs> Let me hear you. Um, first, you know, uh, what a privilege it is to be in this position that I'm in right now, Amen. in this very spot. Two years ago, if you would have told me that I'd be in this spot, my two-year ago itself would have looked at you like you were crazy. Yeah. Um, so God is good. Yeah. And all the time. And he had a plan for yeah. me. He has a plan for you. Um, for I know the plan I have for you, said the Lord. Come on. Okay? Amen. Uh, what yes, a privilege is to, to share my journey, my testimony, God's written plan uh, with you this morning. Um, I know my mother wish she could be here. Um, she's all the way in Indianapolis and couldn't make it right now, but she is tuned in online live right now. Okay, so can everyone say happy Sabbath, Mama? Happy Sabbath, Mama! She really appreciate that. You know, love mama. God love mama. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just once again, what a privilege it is to be here with you, to bring you um, God's word on our youth day. Yes. Now, if we turn to our Bibles, uh, to Luke 15, verse 20 to 24, and as Pastor Williams would say, if you got it, say amen. If not, have mercy. <laughs> I didn't hear me have mercy, so I'm going to continue. And the reads as followed. And I'm reading from the New King's James Version. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. Amen. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Amen. Church, uh, my sermon is entitled The 360 Effect. Yes. Mm. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord that you be with us today. No. You are speaking to someone. Let them hear you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So just imagine we're playing a sport, whether it's football, basketball, track, cheerleading. You know, cheerleading isn't really a sport, but you get the idea. Uh, <laughs> I hope I didn't affect no one, but it's great. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Um, but just imagine, you know, if, and well, in all these sports, there's repercussions for everything that you do. So if you're playing football and you jump off sides, or if you're playing basketball and you foul out, um, just imagine if you 
didn't get the opportunity to restart. All right, I don't need to use too much football or you know sport analogy, but you know I you know, that's my background, so just bear with me. It, it, it'll make sense here in a second. All Take right. your time, preacher. All right. All right. All right. All right. So just imagine if you didn't get the opportunity to restart and go back and start again, and you were just immediately disqualified. Uh, instead of giving another opportunity, all right, for my sport heads out there who, who know, okay, here we go. Has anyone here ever false started in life? Uh, you're so quick to jump forward and make a false start before waiting and hearing God's voice. Well, I know I have, but I know how great it is to have God as our referee. You know, a game full of chances. Until the day he blows, or will we hear the final whistle, the horn, game over. I don't know about you, but I know what team I want to be on. Uh, team Jesus. Uh, hashtag Team Jesus. Okay. Hashtags. Okay, for those who I just lost, hashtags are a thing now. Um, <laughs> you, you use them in everything. Um, for those who still don't know, it's your pound symbol. Hashtag. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Wake him up. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but let's return back to the scripture. Luke 15, the, law, the parable of the lost son. Okay. Um, what is a parable? Uh, the, this Bible describes a parable as an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Okay. Google Dictionary describes a parable as a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson told by Jesus. Wow. So just keep in mind as I'm reading, Jesus is telling a story, okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and read. Oh, well, you know, in chapter 1 and 2, uh, we know um, that the Lord was motivated to tell the parable um, that he heard the Pharisees and describes ga uh, gambling about him eating with sinners. Okay? So in this specific parable, it begins by saying from verse 11 to 16, I'll read. He said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of goods that fall to me. So he divided to them his, his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, though arose a severe famine that fell to the land, and began to be in, and he began to be in want. He then, and then he went and joined himself to a citizen that of the country and he spent he sent him into the fields to feed swine and he would gladly have fought, filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything now this reminds me of a time when I was when I was about 12, and I'm living in my mother's house, and I have to live under all her house rules, and I felt, you know, I was grown, and I knew myself, so, you know, when I'm mad, and I get upset with my mom, I tell her, mom, when I turn 18, I'm moving out, <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and if you had a mother like mine, uh, she would tell you to go, <laughs> but leave all my stuff. <laughs> All right, but you see here, the father is a generous father. He didn't even hesitate to give him his livelihood. And you know, when I was a child, you don't really realize with your parents and how much hard work that they're putting in for their livelihood just to give them half of your. Oh man, that's real. Being up here and just being an adult now, and realizing being an adult and finally living an adult life that I asked for. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> uh, but God. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Hashtag yeah. but God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, like, he didn't hesitate to give him his portions of his livelihood. And he didn't stop him from leaving either. The father, the father granted his request. We all possess this foolish ambition to be independent. They, they got songs about it, being independent. Uh, but we all know, which is the root of the sinner persisting in his sin the simple state is a departure and a distance from God. And this is where the 360 effect begins. In verse 13, and not many days after, he couldn't wait to leave his father to be independent. Not many days after. So as soon as he got his stuff, he said, listen, I got all I need. I'm out of here. All right. Until. But. Our sinful souls seek to escape from the authority of God. Yes. And when he gathered all his belongings, he went on a journey. Now, when we read, it didn't say a close journey. It didn't say a journey nearby. But it said a far journey. He went far away. Far away so that he can live in sin and fund his sinful lifestyle. Um, he wanted to get out of the God's land. He wanted to leave. Now it was very evident that he had already made the journey in his heart. Yes. Okay? Yes. 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 Now, then he went and got, uh, he got where he was going and he didn't know how to act. You know, sometimes when we get to places for the first time, we, we tend to act out. You know, so, and that's exactly what he did. <clears throat> the Bible says he wasted his possessions in prodigal living, wild living. Um, he was indulging in his earthly pleasures. Well, well. It was easy to get lost. Why is it that we tend to drift so far away when we're indulging, when we're indulging in sin? Is it because we want to try and hide what we believe the Lord can't see? Adam and Eve? In verse 14... You see, sooner or later, sinful practices fail to satisfy. Yeah. It's a sense, in, in a sense of famine and want, marks the crisis in our lives as it did the lost sons. Yeah. His financial disaster is followed by a natural disaster in a form of a famine, which he failed to plan for. We all plan to be successful. Right, we all want to be successful. We want to grow up and have all these things. But when we plan impulsively without the guidance of God, that's where we plan to fail. Yeah. All right. Now, in verse fifteen and sixteen, when the youngest son found himself in the state, he remained in the country in a shameful job, willing to eat the food he was feeding the pigs that were under his care. Mm. Now that's a desperate and just lost. I don't, yes, we've been there. He paid so little, he was paid so little, he longed to eat the pig's food. Oh, man. Just when he thought life couldn't get any worse, he couldn't even find mercy among people. Apparently, once his wealth was gone, so was his friends. So I don't know what kind of friends you got hanging around you, but if you're in the church, never mind. All right. uh, it, the text clearly says no one gave him anything. And it's the, even the unclean animals seem to be better off than he was at this point. Uh, he must have been incredibly desperate to be at this point willing to enter in such a position. But you see, when, we're, when, you, when we remain in an ice, isolation from God, we move into a place of darkness and humiliation. Uh, this paints a picture of the state of a lost sinner who had returned to a life in slavery and sin. Uh, this paints a picture really, you know, sin really does, what, what sin really does to a person's life and, and when you reject the Father's will. See, you can only reject the Father's will for so long, but he'll keep reminding you. Uh, part of it was when I was in school and 
and playing football and God knew what he was doing. He, I was running, but he would always put good people in my way. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, JP, they used to call me JP in the day. Uh, JP, uh, come on, man. We got we got this Bible study thing. Nah, man. You know, I'm good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna chill in my dorm room. Uh, but not many days that he just kept throwing these people in my in my life, and you know, you can only run for so long. Oh man. So all we have done in our lives, now we want to seek for forgiveness, knowing that God is a forgiving God. Amen. Amen. So, get me here. So, this paints a picture of the lost sinner. And if we turn to John 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 30. Four. I'm just going to go ahead and read. Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Okay? All we have to do, so, notice that it mentioned, uh, he, he didn't mention, well, you know, let's also read, let's go back to to chapter 17 in Luke. Well, I mean, verse 15, chapter 15, verse 17. I'm going to read this. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father's house Just give me a second. I just want to make sure I ain't jump anywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was, I kept running in the beginning when I wanted to, when, when I was asked to speak, you know, God just kept calling me. And I just, you know, sometimes you're nervous and you just get afraid. You don't know, you, want, you don't know what to listen for. Uh, but God is good. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So I'm just I'm gonna go back. His financial disaster occurred in a natural disaster in the form of a famine, uh, which he didn't plan for. You know, sometimes we make impossible decisions. Like I said, you know, we plan to fail. Now, as the text that we just read, that we're reading, I'm going to start again. But when he came to himself and said, how many of my fathers have hired servants, have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned amongst heaven and before you, and I run, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Mm. Make me like your hired servant. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Amen. Now, notice it didn't mention that he remembered his father until verse 17. The son's painful circumstances helped him see his father in a new light. It brought him hope. Amen. It's when we run out that we begin to come to our senses and long to return to a state of fellowship with God. Amen. We then remember who gave us our blessing. Yeah. Now, how many of us get you know, how many of us get caught up in our worldly lifestyles that we don't even recognize that we're lost until something happens? Yeah. It, it's an it's only a time of panic when we want to call on our Father. See, the road to, to God for each lost son is different. But if you were given a bless, blessing like I was, we all started here in the church. And we see and we see other people and then we feel like we're missing out on something. We have social media. Uh, 
tricking us, playing games with our minds. Instagram be lit. <laughs> Snapchat be popping, notifications flowing. Now these are all you know popular social media things that you know our generation is acquainted to. And you know, so immediately once we see all these things that's playing games with our minds, we want to try it. So what do we do? We slowly introduce ourselves to all these sudden and we introduce ourselves to these things and all of a sudden we're missing one Sabbath yeah. and we come the next and then yeah. we may skip the next Sabbath yeah. and then we're not at the following right. and then all of a sudden you're gone. Yeah. <laughs> so then when we finally, you know, when we finally go out and have all the fun that we think we possibly can, some tragedy happens to exactly. us just for us to realize that the church is where we needed to be from the yeah. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> All that we have done to ourselves, because wow. you're going to be doing some things to yourself while you're out there. Now we want to seek for forgiveness, knowing that God is a forgiving God. And now we want to start back where we left off, trying to restart and refocus. And we want to change our lifestyle so we can come back to God. We make a 360 effect back to Christ. So, oh my goodness. Listen, God knows the misuse of our freedom will have no better result in the lost son's misuse of his freedom. God trusts that we will learn our lesson and come back to him. Amen. Now, the Bible says the son planned to return to his father, and he says three things in 18 and 19. He says, one, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Two, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And three, make me like your hired servant. <laughs> so this, this also reminds me of a story when I was younger. And me and my oldest brother, we would get in trouble. And with my mom, she would put us in our room. And we would have to go there with the door shut and feel like prison. And we would look outside and we see all our friends playing outside. <laughs> but, but we can't go. So what do we do? We got to our knees, you know, like you would in the huddle. And we said, we have to come up with a plan. <laughs> so, what's the plan? We're looking outside. Our friends are calling us to come outside. So we're motivated. Yeah. We're going to say, all right, Yvonne, Jeremy, we're going to do this. We're going to go to the crack of her door. And we're going to put our lips between the crack. And we're going to sing to her. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to sing to her. And, you know, we would, well, are, we, are, we, are we strategize our plan? Okay. Are you going to say this? No, I'll do this. No, okay. And we say, Mama, can you please go outside? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, we did it. No, it didn't work, but. <laughs> it didn't work. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, and we didn't sound too good, but we thought it would be cute. I was 12. Right. Our family, we all have the opportunity to make a change. Uh, we don't have to stay in our hopeless state. The lost son realized that in his father's house, there was nourishment. Well, all right. He humbled himself, willing. To, if necessary, be his father's servant. All right. yeah, yeah. So we started this journey back home. Now that sounds like a 360 effect. Oh, yes. It's Come real. On. Sometimes we feel, sometimes we make false starts in life. Yeah. And instead of restarting, we keep going. Mm -hmm. we, I know you heard that saying, keep digging yourself a deeper hole. Yeah. <laughs> we maybe we're too embarrassed to look back and start all over again. God is, is waiting for your 360 effect back to him. Just do it like that. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm going to continue to read from 21. And the son said to himself, Father, said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. 
put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For my son was lost, but my son was dead and is now and is alive again. And they began to be merry. When the lost son returned to his father, something significant happened. Jesus portrays the father as waiting for his son, perhaps daily searching, searching in a distant road, uh, hoping for his son's appearance. He was, able, he was able to see the young son when he was still, a dis still at a distance. This means the father was watching for his, for his son, waiting for him and longing for his return. It's like he knew he was coming back. I know I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up a lot of younger stories of myself. But when I was younger, I attempted to run away from home. You know, under all those high schools. And, you know, I'm running away, but you know I had to bring my one toy. Of course. We've been there. Somebody said, it. okay. And... <laughs> But when I returned back home because I planned to fail, my mother would be patiently waiting on the couch, uh, knowing I was coming back. I don't know about you, but when it's dark and when it's and you're afraid of the dark <laughs> and it's cold outside, our home is a safe place. <laughs> oh man, I'm sure this son didn't expect uh, didn't, didn't expect his father to be waiting for him. He must have been really shocked. The father, the, the, his father's reaction. And, you know, the obvious answer is because he loved him yeah. and was eager to show him that love. Yeah. You know, show him that love and restart and re, restart and restore their, their, their relationship. When the father reached his son, not only did he throw his arms around him, but he also greeted him with a kiss of love. Yeah. But the son continued to recite his speech to his father and he only managed to get two out so when we practice when you recite something I know me and my brother were in that room concentrating we really wanted to get those verses out and sing and hopefully we can go outside so the son he said one father I have sinned against heaven and in your sight too and I am no longer worthy to be called your son the father was so filled with joy that he didn't even let his son finish you know, he was so, he, he wanted to, son wanted to tell, he wanted to confess everything that he had done to his father. And, you know, about the things that he recited beforehand. And he didn't, the father didn't even question him, lecture him. Instead, he unconditionally forgave him. Yeah. And he accepted him back into a, into fellowship. Now, this paints a picture of our heavenly father, how he feels towards a sinner who repents. God patiently waits for us to repent so we can show him, so he can show us his great mercy because he does not want us to perish. All right. He's waiting for your 360 effect. Yes. Back to him. Amen. Amen. The lost son was he 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 was he was so satisfied mm -hmm. to return home yeah. as a slave. Wow. Mm. He, he was satisfied with that. But he, to his surprise and his delight, he was restored in, a full, in his full privileges of being his father's son. Uh, my mama made me clean up a little bit, but she still loved me. The father then ordered the servants to bring the best robe. And, and a ring for his son's hand, and sandals for his feet. God always wants to give us his best. Yes. This is a wonderful example of the love God has towards us. Yes. He seeks after us and reaches out to us. When, when we come to him, he washes away all our evil deeds and of our past. And he doesn't hold them against us. Clean slate, a white robe. Amen. 
If we're so eager to leave God, things will go badly for us. Yes. We will be humiliated in the yes. uncaring yes. world. Yes. The world goes on. The world goes on. The further we get from our Father's love and care, the worse off we will be. Our best course is to return to God and his forgiveness. Amen, brother. The 360 Amen. effect. Hallelujah. How many of us are like the lost son? Come on. We live under our parents' rules and lifestyle. Every Friday night we feel it's wasted. We're thinking about Saturday night. You know, and and and, and when we finally get the opportunity to, to break break away and finally feel and, and live in our own lifestyle, we think the further we get, the more freedom we gain. We go into a, this sinful world and try to enjoy all and, and, and the things that we, all the opportunities, we try to get all the opportunities that, that we want to enjoy, looking at life in a whole new lens. So, so much freedom is, is what we feel this is what I call the 360 effect. It, look at where you started. In church. Memorizing scripture. Participating in church activities. Discussing the truth. And you start to wonder. What the world is like. You think about the. You, well, you think about what you don't have. And all the things that you want to do. Instagram, social media, tricking you. <laughs> <laughs> then when you go and do it, you think to yourself, you're having all, you think, then you think you're having the fun, but, but once you hit a certain point, you, you fall so low, you realize that the worldly lifestyle is just a cycle. Ebor City is going to still be there. Yeah. Soho is still going to be there. Yeah. Downtown Tampa is still going to be there. Yeah. Clearwater is still going to be there. Yeah. They're going to be there. Yeah. And if not, it's going to shut down and they're going to open up another one and put it there. Oh. Yeah. All right? Because that's how it goes. <laughs> and, but you become, once you stay out so long and, and you're embarrassed, uh, you start to be confused, and, and then you're hurt, and then now you're ashamed. And, and you remember where you came from, but, but then you, you still feel ashamed to come back. Yeah. You know, you, the gift is real. Yeah. Um, sometimes even, sometimes even hurt so bad, you don't know what to do. Because you don't know what to do, you continue to keep what you've been doing. Like the lost son. The lost son knew he was in a horrible place, but he remained because it was familiar to him. He continued to do it. He got so low, he was willing to eat the pig's food. Thank God he woke up. Amen. 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 I'm here to tell you that no matter how far you go, our Father is waiting for you. Amen. On the couch, like Mama. Amen. But on his throne. Amen. Ready to meet you with his arms wide open. Yes. Ready to embrace you and give you the best robe. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Kill the fatted calf for you. Put a crown on your head yes. because you are kings and queens. Amen. A chosen generation. Yes. You know, our God is patient yes. and generous with all of his children. Amen. And he is willing to wait for your 360 effect and welcome you home. Amen. I'm a living testimony. Amen. I have made a 360 effect Amen. back to Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm standing in this very position. Now, two years ago, my motto 
was money, God, and more money. <laughs> I'm not claiming to be perfect, but my God is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm praying as we should be praying to be like him more and more each day. Verse 24 says, For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. God was so happy. So happy to see his son. Oh, man. God was so good. Mama, look at me now. Yes. All right. If you're tired of false starting in your life, if you're tired of being like the lost son, if you're still in the cycle of your 360 effect, you may be at 180 degrees, you may be at an acute angle, but you want to restart and refocus. Yes. I start to stand to your feet. Listen, kings and kings. If you allow God to be the coach, he will put you in the best position to win. God is willing to help you if you just allow him. Family, let's restart and refocus our minds back to Christ. Let's make up our minds. Let's not seesaw. Let's make up our minds to stay with God and His will. So we don't have to be like the lost son. Amen. Be humble. Come back home. God will accept you. Look after us and give us the best. Yes. God is so good. 